Hey guys, welcome back to the show and thank you so much for joining us for another episode. In today's episode, we're going to be talking about how you can perform your absolute best and what factors go into that. You're also going to be introduced to one of my personal idols and you're going to be able to hear one of Alex's biggest pet peeves. So we'll see you on the inside, but make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Deion Sanders, someone that I massively look up to. I'm actually the biggest fangirl of Deion Sanders. I often joke that I would get a WWDD tattoo to ask myself when I'm in a rut, what would Dion do? Now, we're going to get into Deion Sanders here in a little bit, but thought we would take a second to talk about our weekend. So how was your weekend, Alex? It was good. Um, we're coming off of a week that was a little bit more hectic. We've got a lot of moving parts right now and a lot of good things happening. So um, just, you know, it's, it, we're in a phase of, of kind of bunkering down and, and pushing hard. And so coming off of that, the weekend was centered around um, decompressing, recharging the batteries, uh, spending some time in the basement and uh, sleeping, watching a little bit of TV, movies, uh, playoff football is on. Mm -hmm. And so getting caught up on that and then just spending time with the dogs, getting to spend time with your family. And so it was pretty simple weekend, but it was exactly what I needed as a, as a whole just to, uh, and, and with the kind of bunker down mentality of right now, that's going to continue for the next couple of weeks at least. And so I understand that and I am tailoring my day-to-day -day life to, to fit towards that. So how was yours? Yeah, I think low key is like a perfect culmination of what the weekend was. And like you said, it was exactly what I needed and what we needed and just not to have a ton of plans to to get done what we needed to get done. And we still spent time with people, um, which was really nice. I know Thursday isn't the weekend, but we got to go out to dinner with my sister on Thursday. And then going into Saturday and Sunday, we got to see my family. I went to my first Legree class oh, yeah. on Sunday, which I will be back. I, but oh my gosh, it is you have to have such a strong core to do Legree. And I knew that from like doing yoga and I haven't done Pilates before. I know that you're still using a reformer type piece within Pilates versus Legree. But I, you know, I don't know if you ever get this way. Do you get the way of now that you know more that you worry about injury like so much more? Not so much more like it consumes you, but you see the injury in so many things that people are doing. Potentially, I think that from a sports background standpoint, I have a full understanding that you're more often going to get hurt by like half-assing it and being worried rather than just full sending and taking your chances. So I think that that mentality has always stuck with me, but I, I get what you're saying. You become just more aware of what's going on and the potential risk that that comes about. But uh, I always feel as though that uh, leaning into that worry oftentimes is going to get you hurt mm -hmm. rather than keep you more safe. Yeah, I see that side of it. And I guess the the part because you're working with a moving platform and you're having to brace your core a ton. And since I've learned how to truly brace my core versus thinking I just knew to be like, oh, just like squeeze and you're like bracing your core. And, and I've seen women go through like having separated abdomens and having like bulges within their core, going to a class like that where it's it wasn't a beginner class, which was a mistake on my end. But uh, it's a, a situation where I was sitting there thinking of like, I'm having such a hoard hoard time, such a hard time truly keeping my core engaged throughout this whole class. Mm -hmm. Like what would someone with a more compromised core, would they be putting themselves at danger? And then I get like weary or in my head about who to even suggest going to something like that because I see the risk for injury. Yeah, I think that in those scenarios, it's something that oftentimes if they don't have the core stability, they're either not going to do the move or their leverages are going to get into alignment to where it's not really their core moving. It's just that they've got their body positioned in a way that allows for them to be in that position without a whole lot of muscular tension, which is going to put them probably at a greater risk of injury. But at the same time, they may not even be aware. Yeah, very true. So if you've ever tried Legree, let me know. Go ahead, shoot me a message or comment if you're watching on YouTube uh, or just what other group 
fitness types classes. I really enjoy going to yoga and I want to get consistent with going to a class. And Alex actually last night did like a 20 minute flow. And he said he felt like a new person and asked why he doesn't do it every day. (laughs) Uh, So I think that being able to get into a yoga routine would be my first priority. But it will be fun to keep going to the degree classes, especially going with my sister and actually our friend Mona was teaching it, which was so fun to just watch her teach and like be doing her thing. Uh, So it was a really good experience, but my core definitely was sore for the next two days and even this morning. Before we get into today's episode, I need you to subscribe if you're watching us on YouTube. If you are listening to us on your favorite listening platform, please subscribe or yeah, subscribe to the channel. Leave us a a comment. Let us know you know favorite topics, things that you want us to touch on. Um, we have noticed from previous videos the more that we say subscribe earlier, mm-hmm. more people subscribe than saying it at the very end of the episode. Go figure. So please hit that subscribe button, and we appreciate you guys abundantly. Yes, and you can also leave us a review if you are watching on a or listening on a podcast platform as that greatly helps us. But with Alex talking about ideas or topics, since we're doing a lot of planning going into the new year, this is definitely a time to let us know what you're looking for. Um, but getting into Neon Dion and why we're even talking about him today, maybe it's just for me to fangirl a little bit more. And if you don't know who Dion Sanders is, first, like, pause this and go watch the 30 for 30 that they did on him because they did it incredibly and follow him because he's incredible. But he is just a specimen. He is an athletic specimen. He is one of the, he is the only athlete that has played in both a Super Bowl and a World Series. And he's won two Super Bowls and then he played in the World Series. And it's just absolutely insane that someone could have that much talent. And to hear him talk about doing both sports at the same time, this wasn't in completely different aspects of his career. There was actually one day that he flew from a football game and played or suited up for a baseball game. I'm not sure if he actually played in it that night, but was suited for both professional games which is just absolutely insane. And so with someone that has that kind of talent, as you know, talent isn't the only thing and you need to be able to have a work ethic and be able to know yourself to be able to continue to grow. And Dion actually has incredible like motivational speeches. He is currently the football coach at Colorado University. So you might have heard some of that in the news or his name popping back up um, a little bit more frequently. But we are going off of his phrase, look good, feel good, play good. And he's also said, look good, good, feel good, perform good. And we wanted to talk about a few of the aspects of what it comes to the way that you look and how that can help not only your confidence, but just help you play good and perform good. Right. I think that Dion is a great person to to look for or look at as someone who does exactly what they said they're going to, Mm -hmm. sticks to their word, uh, has a tremendous level of discipline that I think is um, unteachable to a degree. I think that you can certainly be taught discipline, but there are are things from a an intuition standpoint or just life experience that some people have that it's it's un it's unteachable. And so, you know, with him, it has always been an example. I, I, like with his baseball and football career, he had two weeks off a year two weeks off a year from playing two professional sports. I literally cannot imagine. It's it's insane. And, and, and he treated baseball as his recovery. He said, baseball is basically just recovery. <laughs> it's like, I'm playing a full season in the major leagues and it's just me recovering from football. It's just an easy way for me to stay in shape, um, which is wild to me. And so, um, you know, having sports being something for me that was such a, a motivating piece. And I've, I have so many people that I look up to from the sports world, not just because of their athletic ability, but how they carry themselves as men and, and how they carry themselves as, as fathers and into their professional life beyond the sport. Because I think that that is some of the most incredible, those are some of the most incredible people because it's very easy to have made the money um, while you're playing the sport, but to be able to walk away and be like, I'm going to continue to invest myself and be a better version of myself moving forward, not just being done. And that's my career. Like there's more to me than just the sport. And I think that that's a, a really beautiful thing, a very admire, a admirable thing that he does um, amongst many others. And so uh, his his notion of, of just how he carried himself within um, how he looked, 
how he carried himself, the the demeanor, the swag, and those different factors are a you know something that I try to embody. Not to the same level. I don't. I don't have. <laughs> you that don't level. got all the chains. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have the chains. I don't have the same level of, of self confidence. I'm striving for that. Um, but it is someone to to certainly look to to have someone to emulate, if you will. Yeah, and that swagger that we're talking about, like he as I've mentioned, was an incredible athlete. And he also was so known for his looks. And he even got in trouble by the NFL because he was wearing his own clothing on the sidelines that he put his primetime branding on. And it's always been about the look that he portrays. Actually, ESPN has a segment that he's doing right now where he's going over a lot of his like memorable looks and talking about them, which we've watched a little bit of. And it's been really cool to see. But he talks about a lot of just the way that he dresses. Not only is it coming from confidence, but it is that notion of look good, feel good. And we were at dinner the other night and somebody was sitting there and was horribly like hunched over as they're eating their meal. And their shirt was very wrinkled. And I looked over and I was like, wow, there are a few core things that you can do to like really make yourself look better and feel better because they are multi-pronged of it's not just about looking better in the aesthetic side, although completely fine to strive for that as well. And the few things that I noted were your personal hygiene as well as how clothes fit you and if they are wrinkled or not, and then also your posture. So if you have really poor posture, like I said, not only is that going to make you feel better to have better posture, um, but is also going to help you look better as well as personal hygiene. I mean, brushing your teeth, keeping a skincare routine, washing your hair, and clothes not being wrinkled adds so much to how you look and how you portray yourself to others. Because it's not always about how you feel about yourself. It, It is to the core, but also being able to recognize that when you're going out in public, a judgment is being made about you. And it's also about the respect that you're giving the person that you're meeting on a day-to-day basis or meeting in that scenario. And we were listening to a podcast of Huberman and Tom Segura, which was a great matchup of those two. And that's exactly what Huberman said. He was talking about his tattoos and he made a comment of like, be you, but understand that people are forming an impression. And I thought that was the perfect way to encapsulate the the concept of you should be who you want to be, but recognize based on what you're striving to accomplish that people are always going to be making an opinion or a judgment on you. I think another thing to add to that list is how you're speaking to other people, how you're carrying yourself. The posture goes with that, but how you're walking into places, how you're sitting in your seat, how you're like just how you are greeting other individuals, all those things go into play and don't cost you any money to do. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that oftentimes when people are are thinking about, I want to, I need to look better. I need to have better clothes. It's always a financial commitment of like, I need to have more expensive clothes. Mm -hmm. And that's not always the case. You more so needing to find clothes that fit you well. It doesn't matter if they come from Target or they come from Gucci. Like it's just a matter of finding clothes that fit you well, that accentuate your your physique and, and, and your body type that allow for you to feel confident and for you to feel that you're in a position where you're able to carry yourself the best version of yourself throughout your day. And so I think that that is the the one thing that I wanted to drive home because it's very easy to think like, especially using Dion as your example, chains, jewelry, <laughs> those things. It's like, well, I don't have the the money to be able to do that. And it's like, that's not what we're saying. It's more so finding ways for you to be the most confident in yourself. And when you're talking about your physical appearance, this is something that managing your health, managing your diet, and those different aspects are going to positively impact your energy and your mood, which are going to be um, things that very much so play a role in how you're carrying yourself, how you're treating others and and those different aspects. Yeah. And I think that we've, I mean, we've mentioned it before of just you dressing up on a day-to-day basis and that helping your productivity as well, because it's that same concept of look good, feel good. So you made a switch within this year of you really- Not this year and not last year, but yeah. (laughs) Well, years are getting away from me here. Years are getting away from me. But of really not wearing sweats most of the time when you're going into your office to work, even if you're going in there at 5 a.m., you're normally wearing dress pants and a button down. Uh, and what that has done for your confidence, your productivity, and just 
overall how it's impacted your day. Yeah, I, I, I think that it comes in waves. There's certainly periods of time of work for me where I can wear sweats and it feels fine. But I think that if I'm in a season where um, work has become very consuming and I am in a state where I'm like, oh, I'm behind, I just got to keep rushing. And I'm like, just getting in sweats every every day repetitively. I'm just not showing up at my as my best version. And so the easiest way to pull myself out is to get dressed up, is to wear my nicer clothes to work, even though I'm literally just going from our bedroom, which is on is upstairs. I go down stairs and my office is on the main floor and it's, you know, what, um, I don't know, 50 steps or so for mm -hmm. me to get down there, but it makes a big difference to me of, of how I'm approaching my day and, and what kind of version I'm bringing to the day, because it's, it's difficult. Honestly, if I have a suit jacket on and I am going about my work day, it's honestly harder to not perform my absolute best. Like it would be very challenging to give a lesser version to where, like, look at yourself. You have a a tailored suit jacket on, and you're out here just half assing it. That that's not going to work. And so it just it forces you to be in a situation where you're going to level up and and be in a position where you're giving your best self to. In, in our case, to people we care about a lot who are paying us money to perform, to be in the best position, to put them in the best health possible, and it would be a disservice from me to not bring that every single day. Yeah. I mean, we're trying to get people to show up as the highest version of themselves or the highest standard of themselves. And it's really hard to ask someone to do that when you're not doing it yourself. And we've talked about that within walk the walk of if you're going to talk about it, like do it. And that's also going to be an example for not only the people around you, but the people that we're personally having that relationship with. And like you said, they're paying money and paying good money to be able to work with us. And that's what I'm saying about that respect that you hold for someone else. And you've probably also heard Alex talk about how I will dress a little bit like a slob around the house. And you know what? It's true. I can't even fight it. But within that, it's really being able to have a conversation with myself about either when I do need to put on some clothes and pull myself together, but also what's best for that scenario for me right then. So realizing that for myself to be able to really work the way that I want to, and a lot of women will understand this, but my clothes aren't really sitting around clothes in a lot of the time, and I'll feel discomfort within being in them. Now, I have definitely invested in some pieces that just fit me better and are still comfortable. So it's not that, oh, I either have to look like an absolute slob or I have to look like I'm going to meet the president. There is an in-between there that you can be on uh, and figuring that out for myself of, hey, what are some cute, comfy outfits I can go to where I'm just putting myself together a little bit more? Or that has also really played into not only my skincare, but also like my hair care and putting on makeup and aspects like that. So it doesn't always have to be in putting on a suit jacket, but really being able to look at how you are presenting yourself and how you even are viewing yourself because you run into reflections of yourself multiple times throughout the day. While I do not have a mirror still in my office bathroom, so I don't see myself then, I see my reflection throughout the day walking past a mirror, seeing a window and seeing myself. And that can be really hard for your self confidence if you like walk past and then you see yourself and you're like I look like hot shit right now I look like hot garbage and that can take a, a turn for the worse for your productivity for your confidence and for how you show up in the world that rest of the day are you wanting to hire the last coach you will ever need? Well, look no further. Physique Development is here to help you. We have a huge emphasis on knowledge and communication and making sure you know how to get yourself in the best position so you never have to hire another coach again. If this sounds great to you, then go ahead and fill out the inquiry link in the show notes or the description box, and we would love to get on a call with you. I'm going to to push us into a little bit more of a, a vulnerable state here. And you're in a phase right now where your clothes are just fitting you differently. Mm -hmm. And you're not happy with some of the clothes that you have and, and how they're sitting on you. And so in a time that you're going through that within your wardrobe, it's everyone's going through it. I've gone through it. Everyone listening to this has gone through it. And if you're going through it right now, 
understand that there's this is a season and you're moving past it. But what are some of the things that you do in this time frame to make yourself feel the best when you only have maybe a select handful of clothes that you feel fit you the best? Yeah. I think that one part of it is realizing that I am in this phase and being able to have grace with myself of not everything that I put on is going to fit me the best or look the best on me. And that also falls into like clothes fitting you properly. And that doesn't mean just big oversized clothes of you need to make sure that they are a little bit more form fitting, but wearing clothes that are too small or too tight on you. I've seen the graphics before of it's like the same girl in like a size four versus a size six and the size six just she looks so much slimmer she looks so much more confident so much better because the clothes actually fit her and I always think of that graphic of instead of holding on to like this size that I'm hoping for or that I've yearned for in the past of being able to see like no one sees your tags and so it really only matters about how you look and feel in your clothes that are again going to add to that confidence so giving myself grace of I am in a transition. And so if I try on a a piece of clothing and it doesn't fit me to not immediately tear myself down, it's having that moment of like, this sucks because I was going to wear this outfit or I was going to wear this pair of jeans and they just don't fit. And instead of thinking I need to fit those clothes, I've gotten so much better at realizing these clothes no longer fit me. This goes in a separate pile. And that's helped me a ton because then I'm not reaching for the same clothes or my closet's not cluttered with all these clothes that don't fit me. And over the past few weekends, I'll spend an hour or so going through, trying on stuff, putting together outfits. And that's helped me too so that when it's time to get ready, I'm not like, I I don't know what fits. Now that happens every once in a while and Alex can attest to that, but I'm in a much better spot if I can just grab something because I know it looks good together or I know it fits. And so being able to put together the stack of like, this is going to goodwill and I have to make peace even if I spent good money on those clothes or I liked how those clothes used to fit me, they no longer do. And then it's now figuring out what I do feel confident in. And again, need to give yourself grace with that because I'm figuring out clothes are fitting my body differently. Different um, styles of clothing might look better on me now than they did when I was leaner and vice versa. And so I'm having to figure out what my style is, what my preference is, and what makes me feel good. And it, it's a process. So it's it's really just being able to look at it for, I can't change it and I don't want to change it. Like I don't want to shrink myself to fit into clothes because you're not not trying to squeeze your body into clothes. You're trying to make clothes fit you. And so always keeping that in mind allows me to, again, have that piece of this no longer serves me, use some Marie Kondo, and just ship it off and say, I'm done with it. Let's move on to the next piece, or let's see what is going to help me. And there's some tears along the way or there's some frustration if I put on something that I'm I'm like, I know this goes good together and then I realize it doesn't fit, but it's a work in pros- progress throughout the process to really be able to figure out what is going to work for me. And I think on that same note, there's a a point to be made that when we're looking at, it's very easy to get caught up in how other people look when we're in phases like that, Mm -hmm. where it's like, I wish that I looked like that, or I wish that I looked like a former version of myself. And I think that it may be helpful for us to have a conversation on looking at, because with, with fashion and and, and how you carry yourself in general, there's gotta be some inspiration, right? Mm -hmm. You're not just I mean, maybe some people are like pulling it out of thin air of like, I fuck with this type of clothing or whatever, but for the most part, you're finding inspiration and it's, it's a fine line to have inspiration and trying to copy and, and trying to be that person type situation. So do you have any tips or, or tricks that you do because you do a great job with your inspiration around clothing and style and those different factors? Um, do you have any tips or tricks to walk that fine line? Yeah, well, first I would say that um, imitation is the sincerest form of flattery. Uh, And then I would also remind you that identity theft is not a joke. (laughs) But when I am looking at inspiration... uh, You should probably let people know (laughs) that that's an office quote. I mean, people should just get that that's an office (laughs) quote, okay? Okay. Uh, I don't want to interrupt you while you were talking, and it just, you know, it was. But uh, for the... 
clothing and the inspiration. So one aspect is if you don't follow Styled by Florencia on Instagram, you need to be because she does beautiful flat lays of outfits and that helps so much with getting inspiration where I'm not just looking at one size in that outfit because that's what I used to struggle with the most, not only with ordering clothes online, but just in general is I wasn't very aware of what clothes looked good on me and I would see them look good on someone else and I would want to buy them, then I would get them. Them. They wouldn't look good on me, and I would be frustrated about it, where I could have sidestepped that whole situation by being able to get to know what did look good on me and not making purchases based on how it looked on someone else. So Style by Florencia does a great job because they're just flat lays of outfits, and you don't have to have that exact piece. Like You can just have, if she's showing an outfit with a brown sweatshirt and a puffer vest, you don't have to have the exact one that she's linking. You just have to have a brown sweatshirt and a puffer vest. And so I really pull a lot of inspiration from seeing those outfits pieced together and being able to pull things that I might already own or just have to buy one or two pieces to be able to formulate a few more outfits and put together. And I've been very specific on what pieces I am getting of how, what does it go with what I already own or what is it going to add to the clothing that I have and being able to take that approach instead of just following like one fashion blogger of them putting on clothes. Because again, that can be difficult, especially if that was something that matched your physique in the past and no longer matches how your physique looks. So I would also recommend if you are going to follow multiple people who do outfits or like get ready with me's or anything like that, of being able to be aware of first kind of where it falls within your sizing and your body type, but then also being able to uh, take that again just as inspiration and not that I have to copy this exact outfit. There's been outfits that I've tried and I'm like, absolutely not. And I'll just add maybe some modesty or maybe I make it cropped or whatever it may be. And I'm like, oh, I, I like it that way. And so it's not about just saying this is the outfit they're wearing. I have to wear this exact outfit. It's again, using it as inspiration to really piece together what you're wanting. Um, and I like to build outfits off of like a centerpiece for the most part. So I'll even just go on Pinterest and search like loafer outfits. And then I'll really take a look at it and see what do match my aesthetic, what matches uh, some clothes that I already own that I can put together this exact outfit. And I'll put together like boards on Pinterest. I still regularly use Pinterest for decor ideas, for photo shoot ideas. All of the photo shoots that we've done for story have all been like from Pinterest boards that I've put together. But I'll put together boards of either like just outfits in general or based on a staple piece. So if I'm ever in a place that I'm building out an outfit or I'm trying to figure out what to wear, I can be like, I know I want to wear my loafers today. Okay, do I want to wear jeans with it? Do I want to wear leggings with it or a skirt with it? Let me find what outfit really meshes into this. Um, and that's personally how I go about it. Yes. And I think what goes along with this is staying up with your laundry. Yes. And I know that that seems kind of out of left field. So let me uh, venture down this rabbit hole <laughs> a little bit is that by staying up to date with your laundry and not letting just bags of laundry sit around, you're able to continue to wear your favorite pieces. And I found myself, this is something that we have done a much better job of, of over like the last six to nine months of consistently having all of our clothes clean. Um, and within that, I've realized that I was buying clothes because my clothes that I did like were just dirty and I was being lazy with not doing the laundry. And so I was buying more clothes to basically have similar pieces to what I already had because I was just being lazy with getting the laundry done type mm -hmm. situation. And so by keeping up with your laundry, you're able to see, okay, this portion of my closet, I don't even wear. Like this was just here as kind of a, well, this, like all my good clothes are mm -hmm. to the side. Like this is okay, I'll wear this. And then you realize like I can cut most of this out and then you can start to really piece together pieces that you love because you're just doing a better job of, of maintaining your laundry and those different factors. I know it sounds kind of silly. No, I think it goes in perfectly and also loops into clothes not being wrinkled of like if you don't keep up with your laundry, you've likely fallen into letting clothes just sit in the dryer. This is, this is one of my best. 
my biggest pet peeves. <laughs> I, I can't stand and it. And then your clothes are just semi wrinkled slash very wrinkled. And it's like you didn't even clean them. And semi. then you don't even want to wear them because they don't look good. Exactly. And then you have to rewash them again. And it's this whole process. But you're like, I just washed it. So I feel like I should wear it and get use out of it when really you could have just gotten up a few hours earlier and got the dryer out so that your clothes were all in a good spot. But right on with what you were saying is that we used to let laundry pile up a good chunk. And then we wouldn't realize like how much we liked wearing the clothes that were consistently dirty. And we've gotten into of realizing like, oh, I, I really don't wear a good chunk of this. And I I do need to get rid of this and maybe even have some doubles of the stuff I do like, which used to be a hard concept of like, I already have a pair of black jeans. I shouldn't get another pair of black jeans. Where as of now, some of my favorite clothes, I have the exact same color in a second one of it because I realized I was wearing it consistently. And if I felt confident and if I liked it and if it was a piece that could be worn so consistently, why would I not have two? of them like it fits within my closet so I also took like kind of disbanding some beliefs I had about clothing or about my closet or how people were supposed to wear or keep their clothes which has been helpful for us as well of just really doubling down on the stuff we like and feel confident in which has helped you when it comes to building out outfits because how many of like that shirt do you have in a different color or like those lulu shorts slash um uh, joggers of having those so it's just easy to swap out within what shirt you're wearing. Yeah, I, I think that this can be dudes listening to this. If you have a significant other, you're, you're married or anything of that nature, you know that look from your significant other that they're happy with your outfit. They may make a comp, <laughs> they may give you a compliment in those different aspects. This is a sign that you should probably either continue to wear that piece or buy a second one because there are just things that, you know, if, if, you're, if your wife's getting googly eyed at you, it's probably best that you keep wearing said shorts in my <laughs> scenario. <laughs> Look we at do love those shorts. <laughs> so yeah, I, I think that being able to have those base pieces is mm -hmm. super helpful. Pieces that I feel confident in that I can, those Lulu shorts in particular are ones that I can, I can train in, I can uh, sleep in, I can go around the house, I can work in, they look nice on me. I can, we can do YouTube videos like mm -hmm. exercise execution. They're literally so versatile. So it'd be naive of me to not have a very well stocked <laughs> amount of them. Um, and so I think that having those staple pieces and then being able to have kind of the more unique or uh, different color palette pieces to be able to tie into those staple pieces is where things get more fun and, and those different aspects. And I, I think that just taking, coming back to the aspect of keeping up your laundry, taking care of your things that, and that goes for your clothes, that goes for your, your bedroom, your office desk, um, your, uh, just every, your space as a whole, like keeping up with those things makes you feel better and is uplifting to you and, and allows for your mind to, um, have greater clarity in those different factors. Cause we only have a certain amount of bandwidth. I feel like we were talking about this a bunch over the last couple of podcasts, mm -hmm. your mind only has so much bandwidth. And if you are allowing yourself to be in a situation where you're, a, you're giving up some of that bandwidth because you just won't take the 20 or 30 minutes to clean up the kitchen or that 20 or 30 minutes to clean up your bedroom or keep your laundry in, in the way or out of the way. It's like you're putting yourself behind the eight ball by your lack of action and your lack of care towards the simple things that you can take care of. And so it's like, you have to be honest with yourself if you're really trying to improve and you're really trying to excel in whatever the avenue is, looking at things more full picture and not allowing aspects of your life to just fall by the wayside because you're like, it doesn't really matter. It all matters. Everything matters. <laughs> and you should care about <laughs> how you're looking, how your, your space looks. It doesn't like you don't you're not waiting for a time to have nicer things. It's like this is this is cheap. I don't need it. It's like, well, it's all you got. Mm -hmm. So take care of it. And if you're like you're not going to take care of the ten thousand dollar car if you're not taking care of that, you're not going to take care of the hundred thousand dollar car. Mm -hmm. That's just the reality of it. your, your habits are going to continue until you get fed up with your own BS to start taking care of things. And so you might as well start now because when you do have the opportunity to have that hundred thousand dollar car, you're going to take care of it properly because of the practice and habits that you had from the get go. 
Yeah. And I think that that's a big part of it is getting fed up with your own bullshit. And I think that that's been a reoccurring theme for us of when we finally do lock down a new habit or a new routine or whatever it may be, it's normally due to something we've gotten so fed up with ourselves and it's built and it's built. It's caused anxiety in our life. It's caused like self-deprecation of just walking past that thing and being like, uh, just another day where I have not gotten that done. And it's such a relief when you just decide to do it. And it's like, oh, all of that buildup was for basically nothing. If you are a, a bikini competitor who has competed well at the regional stage or at the national stage and not placed how you wanted, I would love the opportunity to work with you. If you would inquire via the link in the description box, that would be the first step. And from there, we'll get a call scheduled. And I look forward to speaking with you. Since we talked about the fact that people are going to be forming an opinion, you can have the most self-love in the world, which is incredible for you to have. But again, people are going to be forming an opinion or a judgment on you. And we've experienced that firsthand in a multitude of ways. And a lot of it has come down to how we're presenting ourselves or how we are dressing. Even though that doesn't change who we are as people, outwardly, people sense that and they see that and they respond differently. So I know it's happened to you very specifically of you wearing like a sweats or more casual clothing versus when you're wearing a suit and how people respond to you or treat you in those scenarios. Yeah, I think that in those scenarios, you're, you're demanding respect by how you're showing up. Um, even if you're dressed nicely in sweats, it's still for the majority of individuals who aren't into fashion or those different things are just going to be like, those are sweats. And thus you're, you're coming in kind of in a lazy way, if you will. Mm -hmm. Whereas a suit to, again, most people, no matter if it is from Goodwill or it is a, well, you're probably gonna notice a little bit of a difference of a custom tailored suit. Yeah. But to the same kind of degree, it's just a suit, but a suit demands respect regardless. And so it's one of those situations where you have to be understanding that you're bringing that to the table, no matter if you don't want that to be the case or not, you have to hold responsibility for that. And, and I think that, um, you know, showing up to a scenario where maybe, you know, we're in the, um, in the normal eye of too young to be going into a meeting like that, or too young to be purchasing X thing. Oftentimes, I dress accordingly to that. If I was mm -hmm. just to you know, be running late from training or be running late from working and I have sweats on, I'm probably going to either cancel or postpone the meeting to be able to show up in a specific way so that I'm getting the respect that I deserve in that setting. It's not that um, they're not being disrespectful towards me and it's not like a woe is me situation. That's the reality of life. Like mm -hmm. you had said, no matter, it, it's all subconscious, not not all, but a, a lot of it is subconscious. And so these individuals are, are creating these impressions off of their subconscious of how you're showing up, how you're greeting them. Like, are you smiling? Are you, are you being uh, vocal? Are you uh, just being polite in general? All these things are, are creating an impression, whether you like it or not. Mm -hmm. And that's going to be something that you have to, to work towards or, you know, work with type situation, whether you like it or not, it, it's just a part of it. And so you have to be cognizant of that as you go into, um, social interactions and those different factors. Yeah. And I mean, I've gotten butt hurt from situations of just being like, why is this person treating me less because I am dressed more casually. But then again, I remember it's the reality of life in this world. World, and no matter what I've either accomplished or where I'm at, everyone's using their main character energy and living their own life, and they're going to create judgments. So there's even had extensive research done on someone's smile and how neat, nice someone's teeth are, and that people with nice teeth and a nice smile are more trustworthy. People with wider teeth are more trustworthy or viewed as more successful. Now, of course, there is a, a money piece that comes into that, but just in general, you can do a lot for your hygiene that can bump you up a few notches to really make you more presentable. But a current situation that got me a little bit frustrated is that we are having a problem with the house and somebody was coming over to fix something and they're coming over at like 8 or 9 a.m. And I open the door and I'm just wearing like sweats and a t-shirt. It's not something that I wouldn't want people to see me in public or like 
people to see me that weren't around the house because I do have outfits that are like, if someone is here, I'm not going to be in that unless it's just Alex. But I felt that I was like in a semi-presentable way. And he was like, did I wake you up? And I got so offended being like, why on earth would you think that I was just asleep? I'm a functioning member of society. Like I've been up for a few hours at this point. And I was so offended and just like, why would he treat me that way? But it was the reality of he was an older gentleman. He saw me in sweats and a t-shirt. That means that I likely just rolled out of bed. And so regardless of if it was true or if that, again, really correlates my worth or my uh, responsibility in a day or anything to that degree, that's how he saw me. And I I don't like that. But again, it's the reality of life. And so being able to use that to your advantage. And what Alex always says that makes me giggle is he says, like, if we're going to play a game, like, let's play the game mm -hmm. of I used to be like, well, that's not fair. It shouldn't be that way. And we would have spirited debates about it. And he would always just very plainly be like, if it's a game that we're playing, like, I'm going to play to win that game. And regardless, if I like the rules, I'm going to use them to my advantage to be able to get the success that I want. Right. I think that any time that you have an opportunity to just slightly improve your your chances of um, you know, making your day better, making other individuals' days better, those different aspects, it is important to do. And it's, it, it comes back to my thought process of everything matters. Mm -hmm. Like I, I think that too often people want to, whether it be from wanting to apply effort or um, lack of, of attention to detail, find themselves in a situation where they just discredit different aspects. And I think that the world would um, function better if everyone had the thought process of truly like how you're treating others, how you're carrying yourself, how all these different things are intertwining. It really all does matter. And it's not just this one-off thing that's just like a throwaway. Mm -hmm. Like the more that we can function in a way that nothing that we're doing is a throwaway aspect, I think the better fulfillment that we all have, as well as better intentions that we carry from a day-to-day -day perspective. Do you think that like habits like hygiene and posture and your clothes fitting and all of that do push over to those other aspects of your life of being able to continue to level up within life? Uh, yeah, totally. I, I think that with those things in place, those are foundational pieces that allow for you to up level type situation. And I think that one scenario that many people see is potentially like a... Um, maybe a artist or, or someone who isn't having to maximize those different things to get that 1% better, that 0.5% that better. They're just seeing them have success. It's like, well, they did it. And it's like, I don't think you're them. <laughs> like if you were them and then you also do all these things, you're going to skyrocket. If that's the case, like if you have that level of talent, if you have that level of, of opportunity and, and, and things lining up for you, then these things are only going to make that better for you. And so stop looking for the, the exception to the rule and navigate in a way that is uplifting you a hundred percent because there are things that, you know, I, the people that I look up to or are people that I admire that they do things differently. And I've tried to implement them into my routine or implement them into ways that I go about my day. And those things just don't align with me. It doesn't, it doesn't fit for me. It feels, um, it doesn't feel like it's it's genuine or that it just aligns. And so I tried and it's it's all good. I, I'm just not going to use that aspect and that's okay. But as you find the things that are the most important to you as a whole and that are going to up level you and, and to recharge your batteries and have you in a position where you're going into your day able to pour from a, a, a full cup, that's all that really matters. Mm -hmm. uh, because I think that, you know, from coming from the, the health and fitness community, you find yourself in a situation where you're just continually or continuously going back to the literature of this is what's best and this is what's best. And we just do all the the most effective things all at once. And, and if you do all that and you take all the effective dosages of all the supplements, you're going to have the best life. And it's like, yes, in, in the research, that's what that says. But your life is not the research. And you have to be willing to have some give and take to what fits best for you and try those things um, to, to find uh, the, the best avenue. And so I think that that's huge too. 
Yeah. And being able to realize that you are going to have to do the habits that are going to make you the version of yourself that you want to be or and uh, before you become that person. So in other words, you have to act like the person you want to become before you become that person. And some of that starts by just holding yourself to a standard or having those foundational habits in place that, again, are going to allow you to keep getting better. And something like Let's say um, keeping my hygiene in a good spot has made me want to be like, oh, well, now I see that I can be better with moisturizing my skin. And it's just about stacking these little habits. So even within my skincare, it started with, hey, let's just consistently wash your face. That's all I need you to do. Just use a cleanser consistently. Don't go to bed with makeup on. And then it was like, okay, now that I've been consistent with that, now I'm going to start using a serum or a moisturizer with it. Now I have like these wands that I use and I have these different aspects that I do, but it didn't start there. It started from stacking one habit, getting good at that, and then being able to keep going. And you'll realize that little things like this will just make you feel so much better and will bring you to that higher standard of yourself so that you can keep stepping level by level by level and keep being able to look good, feel good, perform good. And then to finish off Dion's quote, then they pay you good. Uh, So it's a full circle of self-confidence and a a standard that you hold yourself to that's going to allow you to continue to look good, feel good, perform good. So if you're listening to this and you want more self-confidence, greater credibility, people to find you more trustworthy and more successful, and also to reach those aspects, then go ahead and reflect on these three things we talked about of hygiene, your clothes properly fitting and not being wrinkled, as well as your posture. And if you're not already doing these three things, then go ahead and pick one and start building on it. And we are so excited to hear more about your journey on that, but we'll catch you in the next episode. Episode.